Now, here's a character that has gone long overlooked on the channel, the 11th Division's own Yumachika Ayasagawa. Over the years, a lot of people have requested some kind of dive into this character, whether it's an analysis or a study or what, and I thought we'd kickstart his appearances on the channel with a brand new Bankai theory crafting video. After all, Yumachika has a fascinating Zanpak toe and an incredibly unique relationship with it too, one that I think would help shape what his Bankai might be and what form it could actually take. Narcissistic, self-absorbed, and vain, Yumachika shares many of these dubious qualities with his Zanpak Toe, leading to the fraught relationship they share. But Yumachika is admirable too. For a man of such flamboyance and eccentricity, he shows remarkable restraint within himself, and carries with him what you'd assume is a pretty sizeable burden at all times. As a member of the battle-loving 11th Division, Yumachika is not only expected to desire and cherish the art of fighting at all times, but he's expected to do so in the most staunchly traditional of ways. And when the secret is revealed that Yumachika's true Zanpak Toe is one that doesn't align with the values of the 11th Division at all, instead is actually the quite antithesis of them, it's easy to see this character's ongoing conflict laid bare. Though he might not outwardly appear to fit the Division-mandated mould, he values his position in the 11th Division, the Gotei's battle-hungry unit, enough to not want to jeopardise it by revealing the truth of his Zanpak Toe, which basically uses Kido rather than the brute physical force expected of someone of his position, and respects both the division's captain and, of course, his closest friend Ikaku too much to want to potentially sour their view of him, and, of course, lose their respect. In this sense, there's a great irony to be found here. The man who considers himself to be truly beautiful on the outside also can't ever really embrace himself for who he actually is. Instead, shying away from a core component of what makes Yumichika Yumichika, an actual aspect of his very own soul, a part of his Zanpak Toe, its true nature. I've mentioned it before, but there's a great dichotomy with the 11th Division. It's a pact full of these ultra-macho warriors who, on the surface, seem to be a very straightforward lot, very simplistic people, but they almost all, at least the high-ranking officers, hide some kind of secret and wrestle with some kind of inner conflict, dating right the way back to the Division's founder. What's all this got to do with Yumichika's Bankai, though? Well, Yumichika's Zanpak Toe Ruriro Kujaku represents his biggest secret, the part of himself he keeps concealed. And when trying to think of a Bankai for it, that provided an interesting well of inspiration to draw from. So, in this video, we'll be taking a look at a few ideas for Yumachika's Bankai, but not just for his true Zanpak Toe either, but also potential Bankai ideas for his false, stunted Zanpak Toe as well, Fujiku Jaku. Before we get started on the video, guys, if you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure to do so now for more Bleach videos like this every single week. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up as well to help support me and the channel. And if you want to take that support for me another step further, I do have a Patreon as well. And as always, I want to give a massive shout out and say a huge everlasting thank you to everyone supporting me over there. I really do appreciate it so very much. And there will be some very light spoilers for the Thousand Year Blood War arc in this video. Basically negligible, but I figured I'd mention it anyway. Now, as we always do in our Bankai theory crafting videos, let's begin by looking at the context surrounding the Zanpak Toe and its Shikai in question. Yumachika's Zanpak Toe is Ruidiro Kujaku, which means Azure Peacock. The peacock being basically the perfect animal for Yumachika to be associated with, as it struts around with its head held high, unveiling its incredible display of beauty and colours in its patterned feathers. However, unlike every other Shinigami, Yumachika knowingly gives his Zanpakuto a false name in order to inhibit its true power. 
Fuji Kujaku, which here means Wisteria Peacock. Ruiriro Kujaku's Zanpakuto spirit is just as vain as its Shinigami partner and hates the colour Wisteria. So when Yumachika calls it by that name, it goes into a sulk and won't unleash its true potential or reveal its true form. This is obviously kind of akin to Renji and his Bankai, though this is even worse as Yumachika is knowingly calling his Zanpakuto by a name it doesn't like. So for the vast majority of his appearances in Bleach, Yumachika's Zanpakuto is Fuji Kujaku with the release command Blossom. And all it does in this stunted form is sprout a sickle-shaped blade in place of the regular katana, which can then be spread out into four fan-like blades of the same shape. However, when Yumachika does call it by its true name, Ruiriro Kujaku with the release command split and deviate, its true nature is revealed. The blade disappears, transforming into thick emerald vines adorned with leaves in the design of peacock feathers. These vines spread forwards, latching onto the opponent, grappling and binding them until they're unable to escape. From here, the vines drain the enemy of their Rayatsu, and that Rayatsu is used to feed the buds hanging from the vines themselves. Eventually, the flowers bloom and the enemy collapses, their power sapped from their very body. We've seen this ability used only twice in the series, once against Hisagi where he was left exhausted but alive, and again against Charlotte Coolhorn, where this ability seemed to kill him in the end. Presumably Yumachika can choose how much Ryatsu to steal, though it's unclear how this would work on an opponent vastly more powerful than him. As an added bonus, Yumichika can consume the newly grown flowers and imbue himself with some of the stolen Ryatsu to heal his wounds. What we have here are two drastically different Shikai abilities, which fall under the banner of the same Zanpakuto. So what could Yumichika's Bankai actually be? I like to imagine that if he and Ruriro Kujaku were ever able to mature to the point where they could actually see eye to eye enough to learn Bankai together, Yumachika would only want to do so as long as he could continue to fight while hiding it. So he would have a false Bankai as well as his true one, only using the true one in the same kind of circumstances that he would only use his true Shikai. So let's begin there with the false Bankai. And you know what? In many ways, it was actually much harder to come up with Bankai ideas for Fuji Kujaku than it was for Yumachika's true Zanpakuto, as Fuji Kujaku is so extremely basic in its design. I mean, outside of growing a few more blades, it really doesn't do anything, which of course is the point. But I came up with one idea for Fuji Kujaku's Bankai that I quite liked, and as always, I've tried to put together some crude renditions for you to help visualize them a bit easier. But essentially, Yumanchika's blades grow even larger, longer, and more curved than ever before, and he's draped in an ostentatious orange and emerald cloak and scarf duo that is somewhat reminiscent of the feathers of a peacock as it floats in the air behind him. As is expected of a member of the 11th Division, these bigger, more dangerous blades don't have any special abilities of note, save for one. In Bankai, even though it's still being insulted with the name Wisteria, presumably, Ruiriro Kujaku can't help now but bleed through a little bit. And so every time Yumachika cuts his opponent, some of their power is drained from their wound. It's negligible enough that someone like Ikaku wouldn't necessarily be able to spot it were they watching Yumachika fight, and it would simply seem like the enemy is tiring, perhaps quicker than usual, but tiring all the same over the course of the battle. As it's not the true version of his Bankai, it doesn't seem right for it to change too much. A subtle twist on his Shikai and a tease at something more lurking beneath the surface seem more than appropriate. But Yumachika's true Zanpakuto perhaps fittingly yielded a lot more ideas, to the point where I have three in total. Let's take a look at what is maybe the simplest so far to begin with, but also possibly my favourite. For the first Bankai idea, Yumachika turns his Zanpakuto upside down, pointing the blade at the ground in a way reminiscent of Byakuya Kuchiki's Bankai activation ritual, though perhaps not with the same elegance. As he calls the Bankai's name, the blade disappears entirely. 
Instead, the emerald vines of Ruriro Kujaku begin to seep downwards from the guard, almost like an ooze latching onto the floor before spreading out across an enormous space at an alarming speed. From a visual perspective, think Pernida Pankajaz's nerves as they encroach upon all surfaces like a creeping hand. Except this time, it's far more beautiful, transforming the battlefield around Yumachika into a glistening green garden of vines, peacock-style petals and buds all ready to bloom. Yumachika himself stands on top of a platform in the style of the peacock's feathery eye, protecting him from his Bankai's own ability. And so, once the transformation is complete, Yumachika stands above an entire network of roots, his Zanpakuto having entrenched itself in the very ground around him. The vines spread across a huge area, ensnaring everyone within their grasp. In Bankai, the vines act in very much the same way they do in Shikai. Anyone who touches them has their Reiatsu drained to feed the vines themselves. There's a crucial difference here, however. While the buds still bloom, this time it's purely for show. Yumachika doesn't need to consume the flowers anymore to feel their effects. Here, he is part of this flower and root network. He is the nexus of the entire root garden, and all the power they drain flows straight to him. The vines don't interrupt other combatants on a physical scale like they do in Shikai where they actively bind and wrap around the enemy's body. Here, they simply slowly, almost insidiously rise up and feed on everyone as they can, and over time, combatants across the battlefield, friend and foe, may begin to feel lightheaded. Theoretically, Yumichika can sustain himself and his life force for hours using his Bankai, even if he's taking damage. That does seem quite powerful though, so I've included some disadvantages too, of course. The biggest one being that while his Bankai is active, Yumichika can't move. He's required to remain rooted to the ground, the focus point of the vines themselves, their central hub, as it were. Essentially, he has become a sort of plant himself here, with his roots outstretched, burrowing deep into the earth. This is something that I think would evolve with training, however, and eventually Yumachika would learn how to move while remaining connected to his Bankai and its network, its web, but for the time being, it does leave him fairly open to attack. And not only that, but the individual vines themselves are extremely robust. However, if someone were to damage them somehow, as they are now all a part of Yumachika, essentially like a central nervous system, Yumachika would feel their pain too. Obviously, it's reminiscent of Kokujo Tengen Myo in that way, but I'd argue in some ways it's not quite as drastic as the actual injuries themselves aren't reflected on Yumachika the way they are on Komamura, although considering Yumachika's Bankai covers such a massive area, with so much of it potentially unguarded, perhaps it is even weaker in that sense. So that's the first Bankai idea. The next two are a little more conceptual and actually kind of revolve around the same idea as well, so they probably won't take quite so long to explain, but I like them all the same. For the second idea, Yumachika can't activate Bankai until his true Shikai has sapped and stored a certain amount of energy. At that point, Yumachika activates Bankai and the vines of his Shikai disappear entirely, transforming into pure pure azure-coloured Reiatsu. This fiery Reiatsu reforms behind Yumachika, taking the shape of a gigantic, majestic peacock, an apparition of Ruriro Kujaku itself. It's less a physical construct than, say, Mayuri's Bankai, and more an ethereal Reiatsu-based creature whose body flickers and licks like fire. Uh, again, visually speaking, think Stark's wolves for comparison. Its enormous wings vaguely take the shape of the vine petals from before, rippling as the Reiatsu spreads outwards, while remnants of those very vines form a regal-looking collar around the bird's neck. 
In this form, Yumichika himself remains the same aesthetically. The green and orange cloak from his false Bankai was a result of Ruriro Kujaku himself wanting to appear in all his glory like this, but being of course suppressed by Yumichika. This particular form harkens back to Yumichika's conflict that we mentioned at the start of the video. Here he is emboldened by it. It's true, dazzling beauty apparent for all to see. This is Yumichika were he not shackled by his dedication to the 11th division. With this version of his Bankai, Yumichika's glitzy, shimmering spirit is unveiled in its fullest sense. But what does this form actually do besides lording it over everyone else with its resplendent appearance? It needed to store up energy for a reason. Once summoned, the gigantic peacock rains feathers down upon its opponent and they bury themselves into the ground. Think Avirama Redder's very own Devora Pluma ability to help you visualise it. There's a little more to it than that though. These feathers are filled with, of course, the stolen energy of the opponent. And on Numachika's command, the bird shrieks, detonating the feathers in a series of violent green and blue explosions. Being made of Reatsu itself, the bird cannot be harmed. And it can continue to unleash wave after wave of feathers until its Reatsu stores are depleted. That being said, once it has expended the Reatsu it stole from the enemy, it vanishes, returning immediately to its Shikai state. So in this sense, Yumichika needs to time it correctly and make the absolute most of its effectiveness. Ruiriro Kujaku doesn't suffer fools, and that's true of its Bankai too. Once it's done, it's done. And the final Bankai idea I have also revolves around the colossal Reiatsu Peacock, though this time it takes more of a neutral stance, which I think could be quite funny and quite intriguing. Perhaps out of spite for Yumichika calling it by a name it hates for so many years, Ruriro Kujaku traps both Yumichika and his opponent on the petals of a giant flower as the bird looms over them, its huge wings encircling their arena, cutting them off from the outside world. This one's pretty simple. Every time one of the fighters lands a hit on their opponent, a vine appears, wrapping itself around the injured party and begins the countdown, slowly sapping them of strength. This Bankai kind of reminds me of Hisagi's Bankai from Can't Fear Your Own World, Fushi no Kojo, but I can just imagine Yumichika activating this Bankai for the first time, only to be absolutely furious that Ruriro Kujaku traps him as well. No matter what his Bankai is, I feel Yumichika's Bankai needs to centre on that core theme of stealing Reiatsu to help feed something, to help something grow, while putting on an incredible display of natural colourful beauty. When thinking of ideas for Yumichika's Bankai, I decided to go big and bold with it first and foremost, as it feels like Yumichika finally getting the chance to display his true self after hiding for so long. But that's it for the video guys, let me know in the comments below what you think of my ideas for the Bankai of Yumichika Ayasegawa Zanpakuto, Ruiriro Kujaku, and the false Bankai for his false Shikai Fuji Kujaku. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below, let me of course know your theories as well, I'd love to hear them and see what each and every one of you manages to come up with. This is a really intriguing Zanpakuto with a really cool power, there's that air of mystery about it as well as we've really really don't get to see it much at all in the source material, which of course makes it all the more fun, although sometimes more difficult. Though actually, I like I said earlier, I do think the true version of this Zanpakuto is actually decently easy to come up with a fairly cool idea for a Bankai for, but maybe you disagree. Either way, let me know in the comments. Make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't done already. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Check out Mr. Tomo Talks Games as well. And until next time, I'll catch you later. And I'll see you then.